ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗ್ಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ರ್ಯಾಡಿಕಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾನಟಾಲಜಿ ಫ್ಯಾನಟಾಲಜಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಥ್ and there is a great need in society for this study because most people really have no idea of death and they have no idea how to approach death or how to deal with it they prefer to suppress the idea of death as long as possible and uh really just try to forget about it <laughs> but that doesn't help It's like you can forget about paying your taxes but that's inevitably going to catch up with you. And the same way you can forget about preparing for death but death is still going to come. So death is a pretty unpopular subject. But it's not an unpopular activity because after all everybody has to die. <laughs> so really we should have some kind of thanatological education to prepare people for death and dying not only the people who are immediately going to die but those around them so they know how to support and help and treat those who are on the door of death death for most people is the greatest fear and this is why they try to suppress it so to have real knowledge of death and actual experience and training and how to deal with it is the greatest solace in life it gives immunity from fear huh one becomes fearless and this is a tremendous blessing because hey the worst that could happen is that i'm going to die right <laughs> so This is why one should understand death and not in the ordinary way but in the way of those who have been successful in dealing with death who have conquered death and actually gone beyond death to a higher state of consciousness Now what is death from a spiritual perspective Well it's simply the exhaustion of one's karma for this life. This is called prarabdha karma or ripe karma. The karmas which are ready for uh activation and fruition. So when these karmas are exhausted, the body that is formed according to the karmas simply disappears, stops functioning. One loses contact with it and one goes to the next stage of life so not only is there prarabdha karma which was created in previous lives but there's also sanchari karma which is stored up for future lives so in other words death is not the end death is simply the transition to the next life and the next life can be in various different forms in various different places and in many many various different conditions and so we need to understand the science and art of karma in order to know how to prepare ourselves for death so that we have an optimal chance of being in a favorable position for our next rebirth So we need to understand then what is death. Well, to go into that, we have to know about the five bodies theory or pancha kosha. Huh? Pancha means five and kosha means like a sheath or a covering. And here is how our bodies are generated. The first kosha is called the anandamaya kosha and this kosha 
is qualitatively identical with Brahman. And if you need to know more about Brahman, please see our previous series on Drig Drishya Viveka. The Anandamaya Kosha is exactly what it says, the bliss body. Ananda means bliss. This is the body in which we rest during deep sleep. And we don't remember it most of the time <laughs> without special training because we're conditioned to have perceptions. And in the Ananda Maya Kosha, the only perception is unlimited being, unlimited consciousness, and unlimited bliss. This is why everybody loves to sleep. And when we get a good night's sleep, we feel so refreshed. The next kosha is the Vijnana Mai Kosha. Vijnana means active intelligence. So this is the intelligence, the will, and the desires that direct our thoughts, words, and activities in this world. So this is a covering. It makes us think that we are an individual, a unique being, separate from God. Of course, this kind of intelligence simply leads to birth in the material world. So the next stage or the next covering is the Manomaya Kosha. And with each covering, with each layer, it becomes more dense and more gross. So the Manomaya, the mind, is more dense and gross than Vijnana Maya or intelligence. And it covers further the original self, the Ananda Maya Kosha. And then a person believes, I am an individual, I have a certain name and form, I have a certain identifiers, such as membership in a particular family, a particular country, a location on the, on the planet, and a species, a sex, a family relationship, uh, a professional duty, a religious duty, on and on and on and on. But these are all designations simply created by the mind. Uh, there's their names and forms. They're not real because they're temporary. All these bodies are temporary, but some are more temporary than others. The mind is extremely temporary. Mind can change very easily, but the mind is also directed by vasanas. Vasanas are mental uh, habits from our previous lives based on the choices that we made at that time. And vasanas can really push us in certain directions that even we don't desire or will. But they come up because they're deep set habits ingrained in the mind, in the mental body. Next, the pranamaya kosha. Prana means life energy. This is the energy body, the energetic field that maintains the unity of the trillions of cells in the gross body and provides the source of energy for the operation of the uh, physiology, the neurology, and the thinking process. This is the uh, five different kinds of prana. Prana, upana, udana, amana, etc. So all of these different kinds of prana have different actions. We don't need to go into that but they're all in the aggregate called the prana maya kosha, the energy body. And finally, there's the anamaya kosha, the gross body with which we're all quite familiar and most of us are very attached to. <laughs> so this gross body is really the only one that disappears at the time of death. And this is called the stula sharira, the gross body. The other four are collectively called the linga sharira, or sukshma sharira, the subtle body. So these five bodies or sheaths cover 
our real nature, which is nothing but Brahman. And like I said, we dealt with that in the previous series. But for the purposes of this series, we can consider that the real self or the soul is, consists of the four higher bodies and that the gross body is the only one subject to death. So if what we call death is only the loss of the Anamaya Kosha and the other bodies, the energy body, mental body, intelligence body, and bliss body, uh, they remain together and they go on to the next life, whatever that might be, then really we don't have a lot to worry about because simply losing a gross body, it's like losing a pet animal, you know? We can easily get another one. Sure, we might be attached to our dog or cat <laughs> when it dies. We feel sad. So there might be some attachment to that body. And of course, the more attachment we have to the gross body, the more we're going to suffer when it wears out. One of the most important aspects of preparing for death is to realize that this is only the loss of the gross body, the densest and, and most gross covering of the self. And that because we still have our energy, mind, intelligence, and consciousness, we can easily go on and create another one. And this is indeed exactly what happens. So the rest of the uh, episodes in this series, which I'm planning right now to have five more after this one, are going to cover various topics in relation to death. First, the wrong views of death and how we can counteract them. Then the different kinds of death according to karma, according to the modes of nature, the gunas, and according to consciousness. Then we want to talk about the yoga of death. There is a yoga process for approaching death. And we're going to go into that in some detail. That might take maybe two episodes to really go through. Then, how to have an easy death. Huh? People struggle so hard to avoid death. And when it finally comes, they're clinging so hard to the body. They go through a lot of suffering. This is totally unnecessary. If one is trained up and also has uh, education regarding death, thanatology, then death can be easy. It can be just like taking off uh, a set of clothes huh? and going and putting on another one. It doesn't have to be this huge traumatic thing. In fact, the yogis look forward to death because they can use death as a stepping stone to the highest states of being. So we're going to go into all that and how it's possible. And then finally, we're going to discuss the after-death states. And these are discussed in great detail in the Vedanta. So we're going to mm, summarize <laughs> that discussion and discuss what is up for us after death. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. <laughs>